when he accidentally touches a wudu, when he touches a woman accidentally, can both be simultaneously correct. I am not asking who is correct. For who is correct, you may have to have knowledge of Quran and Hadith. My question is simple. Can both be simultaneously correct? No. Simple question, simple answer. No reward for that. If I pose you the question, one teacher teaches, 2 plus 2 is not equal to 5. And the other teacher teaches, 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. Can both the teachers simultaneously be correct? Yes. The person who doesn't know maths may say yes. I agree with the brother. The person who doesn't know maths may say yes. All those who know basics of maths, who have passed even standard 4, will say no. Because everyone knows 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. So the first question is, if one teacher said 2 plus 2 is not equal to 5, other teacher said 2 plus 2 is equal to 5, can both be correct simultaneously? The answer is no. Simple. I believe most of you may have passed standard 4. But if I ask you a slightly difficult question, 375 multiplied by 625 is equal to 1 million 525. One teacher says that. The other teacher says 375 multiplied by 625 is not equal to 1 million 525. Can both be correct simultaneously? No. You don't have to be a mathematician. Which is correct if I ask you? Who is correct? Then you may have to take a calculator and calculate. Even if you don't know maths, but if you are logical, one says is equal to 1,525,000, the other says is not equal to 1,525,000. Even if you don't have a calculator, you don't know maths, both simultaneously cannot be correct. To know which teacher is correct, who is correct, you may have to take a calculator and press the button and then you may give the answer. Either the first or the second is correct. Fine? Everyone is with me? MashaAllah. So similarly, to say who is correct or which madhab is correct, the Hanafi or the Shafi, can both be simultaneously correct? The answer is no. But which madhab is more correct? What is the reply? The same reply. You have to check up in the authentic sources. Number one is Quran. Number two is Hadith. Correct. So now, this answer, who is correct? Hanafi or Shafi? Here, everyone will not know. Unless he has strived in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has strived to find out the truth. Now when we read the Quran, it's mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Maida, chapter number 5. Verse number 6. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. O you who believe, when you prepare yourself for salah, wash your face and your hands and arms up to the elbow. Rub your head with water. Wash your feet up to the ankle. That means doing wudu is compulsory before salah. And if you are in ceremonial impurity, you have to bathe. You have to have a bath. And the verse continues. Or if you are ill, if you are ill, or on a journey, or when you come back from the call of nature, offices of nature, or if you are in contact with women, or if you touch a woman, and if you do not find water, take clean sand or earth and rub it on your face and your hands. Talking about tayyamum, if there is no water, do tayyamum. So based on this verse of the Quran, which says that if the woman touches, if you touch a woman, the Arabic word is lamas, coming from the word masah. So based on this, that if the woman touches, or if you touch a woman, you have to do wudu. Of no water is there, you have to tayammum. Now, or you have to bath. Bath or wudu or tayammu. Three options. If there is no water, tayammu. Now, as far as the Arabic word masah is concerned, it has got two meanings. If you look in the dictionary, what is the meaning of masah? 
it has two meaning one is the physical touch the other is the sexual touch so these two great ayamas they were great scholars imam abu hanifa rahimullah may allah mercy be on him he took the meaning that if you sexually touch a woman then doing wudu having a bath becomes compulsory the masaya mentioned is sexual touch therefore physically if you touch a woman the wudu does not break imam shafi may allah mercy be on him rahimahullah he took the meaning physical touch masaya goes to meaning anyone can be right so he took the meaning physical touch so according to the hanafi school of thought sexual touch breaks the wudu physical touch does not break a wudu according to shafi school of thought even physical touch of a woman breaks the wudu you become outside the state of wudu now masa has two meaning each scholar took one meaning but the best commentary of the quran is the quran itself and if you don't find in the quran then go to the next source that is the hadith but when we look up at the other verses of the quran <clears throat> if you read surah al-imran chapter number 3 verse number 47 this word of masa is even present there it speaks about the story of maryam alay salam that when the archangel gabriel he comes and gives her the message that you shall have a son so the reply of hazrat maryam may allah be pleased with her she says in surah al-imran chapter number 3 verse number 47 that how shall ha how shall i have a son when no man has touched me the same word <clears throat> the same root word masa is there now any one of us will understand when hazrat maryam maryam may allah be pleased with her when she says that how shall i have a son when no man has touched me it means sexual touch does not mean physical touch because physically if someone touches a woman she need not have a child but sexually if someone touches chances are she'll have a child so she says how shall i have a son when no man has touched me and the reply comes when allah decrees a matter allah says kun fayakun be and it is that's the full context but the word masa here means sexual touch further when we read the hadith of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam if there's a doubt If you can't understand certain verses of the Quran, you have to go to the next source, that is the Hadith, and see to it that the Hadith is authentic, is Sahih. There is a Hadith, a Sahih Hadith, of Abu Dawood, word number one, in the book of Salah, chapter number seventy, Hadith number hundred and seventy-nine. Hadith Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, she said. once the prophet kissed one of his wives and he went for prayers he did not perform ablution <clears throat> so urwa may allah be pleased with her she asked who can it be other than you she told hazrat aisha may allah be pleased with her and hazrat aisha laughed indicating that yes it was her so the sahih hadith of abu daud volume number 1 in the book of salah chapter number 70 hadith number 179 classified as sahih by the muhaddisin including sheikh nasir al albani it says when hazrat men muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was in the state of wudu he kissed his wife hazrat aisha and went for salah without doing wudu again this indicates that physical touch does not break the wudu there are several such sahih hadith even if you read sahih bukhari if you